All right, let's go over some grid basics and calculations. Um, you guys had a grid calculation homework that I wanted you to go through, but we'll do a couple examples here. Okay, so just a basic understanding of what a grid does. We'll get more into that into image production course, but essentially um, the grid wants to help us get rid of the scatter radiation. It blocks that scatter radiation that's kind of coming off at an angle and it allows the primary radiation to go through. The grid will be before the detector. Okay, just so I don't want that to be confusing. What is the purpose of it? Grids were primarily used to improve image contrast, and they're most often used on parts that are 10 cm or greater. The grid is made up of lead strips that absorb the secondary, which is your scatter radiation, um, that would otherwise sort of make your image not as great. Okay. Um, depending on the ratio of the grid, which is the height of the lead strips to the distance between them, the frequency of the grid, number of lead strips um, or lines per inch, the grid can absorb up to 90% of the secondary radiation that would otherwise reach your image, right? We're no longer using films. I probably should update that word. Um, basically, it's essential for the technologists to adjust those factors when they are using a grid because your numbers grid versus non-grid will change. You can change the KVP, but most often uh, technologists choose to change the mass only for the grid. Um, my little person here, yeah, I'll go up here in the corner. All right, so grid ratio. Because the grid is formed by a series of thin lead strips, and then there is an interspace material, which we want because that is where you're gonna, your primary is going to um, be absorbed through or, or go through and not be absorbed. The lead's going to block it, right? Lead blocks. So if you ever get like a test question that asks you possible materials for interspace material, it can't be lead. If the middle here was lead and the lines are lead, nothing's getting through, right? It's not going to work. Um, but so there's a grid ratio formula, which is the height of the lead strips over the distance between them. So the height of these strips versus the distance between them, okay, will be your grid ratio formula. And the higher the grid ratio, the better it improves your image. The um, more efficient, it cleans up that scatter, so it works harder. There's a series of grid ratios, and these will change as we're moving along, right? Or what your facility has for a grid ratio um, might be different. I've never actually seen a 16 to 1, um, but maybe it's out there. Most often, um, now we're seeing like six to ones on a lot of our digital portables. Um, we'll see eight to ones are very common. A lot of times the table grids are a 10 to one or a 12 to one, um, but you wouldn't know that unless you pull the grid out of there. And just for fun, who's gonna do that? Maybe just me. Um, but you might see a lot of those different ones. All right, so I have a practice grid question here. Um, if the height of the lead strips is 1.6 millimeters, and the distance between the lead strips is 0 0.1 millimeters, the ratio of the grid is what? So you're simply just going to put this into your grid ratio formula, which is H over D. Right? So the height of the lead strips is 1.6 divided by the distance between 0.1 equals 16. Grid ratio is written um, like this, so it's a 16 to 1. Okay, This is a super grid ratio, super easy math. All right? Um, the trick is to find the key terms, so height of the lead strip, distance between them, ratio of the grid, right? So I just kind of broke this down for you again, um, how to separate that out, okay? Here's some more practice questions. Um, these are super easy. These aren't giving you any distractors or any, any extra info to kind of trick, trick you at all. So the height of the strip and the distance, um, the distance between them is the same on everyone. And so um, I'm not trying to make life hard on you, just some practice. And these are on your homework assignment too. So it's really easy. The 0.1 and the 1.2, see how it's 12 to 1? Are you seeing a theme here? 0 0.8 is 8 to 1. 0 0.5 is 5 to 1. All right, this is not super hard math, okay? Don't make it crazy. All right, the one that I want you to watch out for is the one that has the extra info. So this question here is an example that is using a distractor to try and trip you up. So a grid has lead strips 5 millimeters high, 0.5 millimeters apart, 
and 1.6 millimeters wide. What is the grid ratio? We know your grid ratio formula is H over D. So I've highlighted the correct stuff that I want you to have, okay? Five millimeters high is your H. 0.5 millimeters apart is your distance. So height over distance, right? Five divided by 0.5 gives you a five to one grid. The distractor is this 1.6 millimeters wide. That's the trick one. Sometimes you'll see this as thickness. It's talking about the thickness of the lead strip or the width of the lead strip. That is not what I want you to use. You have to use the distance between the lead strips. So this apart, or it'll say distance between, that's what you have to use. And if you do the math and it doesn't come out to sort of a five to one, six to one, eight to one, 10 to one, if it comes out as a random number, you're doing your formula wrong. So you're plugging in the wrong um, factor. So just watch for those. I call them distractors. I don't know what you want to call them, but they're there just to bother you. All right, so grid Bucky factor. These are fairly easy. For each grid ratio, they have a factor to use on multiplications. Most of them, the cheater is to just cut it in half. So five to one is two, six to one is three, eight to one is four, 10 to one is five, until you get to the 12. And for some reason, 12 and 10 are the same at five, and 16 to one is six. So these, um, you just have to memorize. And I think um, Cheryl has a song. She calls it two, three, four, five, five, six, if that helps you remember it. All right, um, practice question here. Calculating non-grid to grid. All right, four mass, non-grid was used. Repeat the exposure. Um, with a 10 to 1 grid. What's the new mass? How do you figure that out? This one's super easy. You simply multiply the original mass by the grid Bucky factor. All right, you've got to go back. So we are going to find our 10 to 1 grid that we used. And the grid factor or the Bucky factor of that is 5. So I'm going to take my original mass that I used with non-grid. I'm putting a grid on. I now have to increase my technique to get through that grid. So I'm gonna multiply the five by four and that gives me 20. So my new mass for that exam using a grid is now gonna be 20. And just remember, anytime it's asking you to add a grid, your number is gonna go up. It's gonna be higher than non-grid, always. Um, okay, non-grid to grid, another example here. The only difference um, with this one is if you notice in the beginning of this question that's giving me 300 MA, and 1 15th of a second. Used to expose a radiograph made without a grid. But now it wants me to figure out the new mass with a six to one grid. I want you to do a hard stop here because you have to figure out your MAS first. So if it's giving you MA and second separately, you've got to calculate those first before moving on. So MA times time, I know you guys know this one equals mass. So these together give me 20 mass. You're gonna multiply that original mass now by the Bucky factor. So we are gonna multiply the 20 mass by three, because a six to one is a three for a factor, and that gives me 60. So 60 is the new mass that I will use um, with a six to one grid instead of um, the 20 with non-grid. And 20 is really high for non-grid. Don't worry about these numbers and not making a ton of sense, um, but it will. Okay, grid to non-grid is the reverse. So we're using a 12 to 1 grid, or 12 mass with an 8 to 1. And now we're going to repeat without a grid. What's the new mass? All you do is divide this time. So an 8 to 1 has a Bucky factor of 4. You are simply going to divide 12 mass by the factor of 4. And that gives me a 3. So when I'm, if I'm going from 12 mass with a grid to non-grid, my number is going to drop, right? Because it's going to be less without a grid. So I'm going to use three.